All right, the first thing you're gonna do is take off the ABS lines. Now these were already pre-broken for me, so they're easy to take off. Now you're gonna take off the actual brake line. It is just one 12 millimeter bolt, super easy. Grab your pliers and take off this cotter key. Now normally there's a castle nut there. I'm not sure why there isn't one on this, but that's okay. It will still stay on there. So pull that cotter pin off very carefully. You're gonna reuse that 19 millimeter socket is gonna grab that nut off of your tie rod end. The next thing you're gonna do is whack that puppy with a hammer ever so carefully. Now I should have put the nut back on. Didn't do that, but I would do that if I were you because it will damage the threads if you miss. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is pull the bolts out of the lower shock. 22 millimeter socket on the bolt head and a 19 millimeter on the nut itself take those two out and then you're going to hammer those bolts out you don't have to hit them too hard they just slide right out just tap them right out tapity tap tap no problem get them out of there and that is going to get the whole hub and everything loose now we are swapping the axle as we do this install but I'm not going to show that in this video we're going to do a different video for that all right now one thing that's important if you're not changing the axle you definitely don't want the hub to come out too far this way because what will happen is the inner joint of the axle will actually separate and it's difficult to get it back together. Now it is possible without replacing the axle. The main thing you want to remember is that, this, that you need to get this lined up straight on. Like so you'll lift this up and then you might have to turn just a little bit to get it to slip back into place. So actually I think I'm going to demonstrate that today because we're already replacing these axles so it's not going to matter if they get messed up. But if you put this out right here, you'll see the axle is out. That's actually the dust shield. Give me one second, I'll bend that back so it doesn't make that noise. Okay, so you can see the axle is out of the inner cup, right? See, it's all messed up. Now, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. All right, so you can see I lifted up the other side to make this go in straight. That's gonna help it line up. And at this point, you just wanna turn it until it fits back in. And once you get it, you'll feel it. There it goes. You see how I did that? So I basically just rotated the brake rotor until this was lined up back on the inside of the boot. Now, obviously this is broken, but you can see that it did go back into place. So just a quick demo on how to fix the axle if it does come, if it does fall out, maybe save you some time, save you some trouble. Basically what you don't want to have happen is for this to flop out and the axle to come apart in the first place. So to remedy that, what you want to do is tie this up with something. I usually use like a piece of wire. You can use a bungee cord, just something to secure it while you're working on the car. All right, so you can see I just used this bungee cord right here to secure the hub so that it will prevent that from falling out. Uh, we are gonna change this axle anyway, so this is just for demonstration purposes, but basically you get the idea, I just want to keep this still. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is take bolt off right here. Honda uses 14 millimeter nuts, but these are aftermarket, so these are actually 15s. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to figure out exactly what sockets you're gonna need. I'm just gonna loosen that. I'm just gonna catch the strut while I take it out. There you go. <sighs> Much easier with a helper. really fast but once you get the bolt threaded in get one of them threaded in the other ones aren't too difficult okay the struts mounted back in place now we can put everything back together just like it was before so what you want to do is so ever so carefully slide everything back together if you're doing it the smart way, you put all your hardware in a box so it doesn't roll away. Uh, especially if you have a kind of a messy shop like I do here. Uh, stuff is easy to get lost. 
So I usually try to keep everything in a little bucket container. As you can see, it goes together very easily. There's no reason it shouldn't. If you're struggling right now and you can't get this to line up, it's probably because you don't have the other side apart yet. You have to have both sides taken apart for this to actually be easy to do. So, and it does say that in instructions. So we're gonna install camber bolts on this as well. Now this bolt has an offset little lobe on there, sort of like a camshaft that allows this to move in and out when you turn it. And that gives you your camber adjustment. And I'll tell you, it's, it sometimes can be difficult to get these to slide in right here. I mean, this one went right in. So what I've done is I've put the bottom bolt in already. Camber bolt typically goes in the top hole. So one thing that's important to know about these camber bolts is that the nut has what's called a self-locking feature. And the top of the nut is actually crimped in just a little bit to give the nut a good grip on the bolt so that it doesn't just back off and fall out on you. So the problem there is that you can't thread it on all the way by hand. And I've had a lot of people return these saying that they thought the nut was stripped out when in reality it's just got this self-locking feature that grips the bolt really tight and then when you tighten it it's kind of it's just on there right so that's why they don't just thread on by hand they're not stripped out they're not cross threaded you just have to have to know that so with that said we're going to go ahead and get this there it goes now see how the, the washer sort of flushed in right there? It just holds the bolt in place properly. And then we will put the nut on right there. Hold this in place. It's a 19 millimeter. No, it's not. It's an 18 millimeter on the bolt head side. And on this side, it's a 21 millimeter. I'm gonna turn the camber bolt and I want you to watch the top of this hub when I do so. You see how it moves? That's the cam on the bolt moving this whole assembly back and forth, right? So now you've got your camber adjustment. And that's just enough. That's just enough. It's not a lot, but it's just enough to get this dialed in for your camber. When you take your car to get an alignment done, make sure you tell your alignment guy that you have these camber bolts. Because I've had a few people get their car aligned and the camber was the same before and after and they complained to me about the camber not being adjusted properly but what happened is that the alignment tech just didn't know that they had these so they didn't think you could adjust camber because from the factory you can't it just comes with these regular bolts and there's no adjustment for camber that's what these bolts do is give you that adjustability so if you didn't know they were there you wouldn't even try to adjust camber so you have to make sure that you tell your alignment technician that you have camber adjusters in there. These little brake line things are broken before I started working on it. What you would probably wanna do is just zip tie it right there. All right, last thing we're gonna do is put the tie rod end on like so. Just make sure that it is seated properly. An air hose is so annoying. This is supposed to have a castle nut on it, but this one does not have one. So I'm just going to leave it as it is because I think at some point these, uh, these tower right ends are definitely going to need to be replaced soon. And when that happens, we'll put a castle nut on there. For now, we're gonna just put it back together like it was. Just bend your, bend your cotter pin back like that so it doesn't come out. Good to go. Brake lines are on. Just double check everything. Make sure you're tight. Now, the last thing we're gonna do is tighten up all the bolts. I've also had people ask where to set these camber bolts when they're doing the assembly. And to that, I'd say you really don't know until you get it on the alignment rack where you're supposed to set them. By and large, you're gonna have positive camber after a lift, so you might wanna set them towards negative if you're just eyeballing it or guessing. So I would put them toward the top of the wood towards the inside. And then when your alignment tech gets a hold of it, he'll dial it in just perfect, but a little tip on that. We're gonna go ahead and do the other side and then drop it down and see what we got.
I lost the footage for the rear installation, so what you're about to watch is the second time doing this job, but uh, we do it just for you guys. Alright, installing the one inch rear spacer for Element. This is the left side, meaning this spacer goes on the left side of the car. Biggest thing to know about these is that you do not turn the top hat of the strut. All you have to do is swap them left to right. So you're going to take the left hand strut, put it on the right, right hand strut, put it on the left. They are the same strut, they're just clocked which means this top head is turned a little bit relative to the bottom differently on each side. So what we've done is we've accounted for that rotation so that you can just basically bolt this on without having to take these studs out. The old design, you had to take these studs out. In fact, there's other companies that sell lift kits like these and you still have to take the studs out and replace them with different studs. This is a left-hand strut. This is a right-hand strut. If I line up the bottom mounts of the strut, you can see right here how they're clocked just a little bit different. So all you have to do is put the left and the right on opposite sides, and then you'll mount your spacer to it, and then it goes right in. I'll show you. This is our left side spacer. Open it up. You're gonna reuse the hardware that was holding the strut in to the car to mount the spacer to the strut. This didn't come off of this car, but it is a right-hand strut. So the spacer is just gonna slide right on to the strut like so. So I'm gonna line these up here at the bottom, and now I want you to see how the mounting system works. So you basically have the same angle as the left side strut using the right side strut. Since these are clocked that far, that's exactly how they go in. So now when you mount this in here, it will, it will line up properly with the holes. And you can see these have already been trimmed. You'll probably have to trim yours. These typically stick out just a little bit further than the one inch spacer. So you will have to take a little bit off the end of this stud for it to fit properly. But you get the idea. That's the difference with the one inch spacer is that they're clocked and you just swap them uh, from left to right. See how I've got that held in there? Very, very rigged, but that's all right. On the inside, you can see the bolts are poking through just a little bit. All you have to really do is get the nuts started. Run them in. There you go. And now the cover was already off, but if you were doing this, you would just go ahead and put the cover back on at this stage. Now all we have to do is line it back up. What you're gonna do is push this back in to its little home right there see that you might have to get out a pry bar or two basically you just have to uh, kind of leverage it into place okay so we got to go up a little with the jack there we go you can see the bolt doesn't really line up right there so what we're gonna do is turn this just a little bit with a pair of vice grips actually these are these are channel locks Oh, there it goes, look at that. It was just the shock was twisted a little bit. No wonder it was so difficult. Now, normally there'd be a nut right here, but it was already broken off. So 
Yours will have a nut that's welded in. Makes it a lot easier to run the bolt in. You basically just get it lined up like this and then tighten it from this side and it'll just find its way into the threads there. Makes it much easier to have the nut on there. We don't have that, so we're just gonna use what we got, which is just a basically what's left over of a nut to go right there. All right, now that we've got the strut mounted back in, we have to reconnect everything. All right, I have to admit that I made a mistake here. One of the things that you're supposed to do in this install, and I got so wrapped up in trying to get that spacer to fit, I completely forgot to install the camber adjuster. So it's a lot easier to install this when the strut is completely out of the car because it's very difficult to reach this bolt right here when the strut is in the way. I wonder if I can get to it with a ratchet and wrench. Maybe I can. If you haven't had this apart yet, this is gonna be very difficult to get loose. You just use a socket, no big deal. But I'm gonna use a ratcheting wrench because I've already gotten that bolt loose. Now if you'll notice on these upper control arms, there's a couple of little holes here. That is actually for the ABS lines, which I also didn't show you how to take apart, but basically they clip into the arm like that. The adjustable arms come with this little bracket right here that allows you to clip your ABS lines into the arm. But as you can see here, this is backwards. So what you're gonna have to do is flip this bracket around the other way so that it sticks out right here. And when you install it, then you can clip these back in. This is a 10 millimeter bolt right here. So we're gonna go ahead and take these out, turn this bracket around the other way, and we can mount this in the car. Now, when you put this in, you'll see that this will now clip in like it's supposed to. So let's go ahead and put this back together. Another question I get is how do I adjust these? Well, this here in the middle, basically turn, it's like a turnbuckle. And when you turn it a certain way, it lengthens or shortens this arm. So as you can see, these are more or less set the same as the OEM. So as a default place to start, you can put those in the OEM position. We want these to be about the same length. So I'm gonna shorten this up just a little bit. I want you to see how this works. Got these two loosened here, these two stop nuts. And then you just turn this like this basically. And then you would retighten these stop nuts. Now let's see how close we are. It's a little too short now. Let's, let's lengthen it back up just a little bit. Okay, I think that's close enough. This will all get worked out when we get an alignment done. But anyway, let's go ahead and put this back in. Now, as you can see, nothing lines up, but we're about to change that. All you have to do is lift the suspension back up into its former place and everything will line back up like it's supposed to. Line up our sway bar link right there, and we'll go ahead and tighten that up. Nope, oh, that ain't it. Aftermarket sway bar end link. Got a 16 millimeter nut. Be the only one on this car. Now, I guess we're gonna have to grab a hold of that so that we can tighten it up. Now to do this right, you maybe would want to grab this side with a wrench and then tighten it by hand, but I didn't do it that way. All right, so there's your sway bar end link. It is not attached on the other side, so it still looks a little bit loose, but that's all right. We will go tighten the other side in just a minute. Next thing is gonna be mounting the hub back to the upper control arm. So what we're gonna do is lift up a little bit more. There we go. So now, is this the one? I think so. Mm. That is a significant amount of resistance there. 
basically just push that in and then you can get the bolt in place all right and it comes with this nut right here so basically you're going to want to just push this in get the bolt to go through like that and then you can put the nut on here like this and then we're going to tighten it up with this 17 millimeter wrench okay now we've got to deal with our abs lines right here like this and these were already broken before i started working on it but it still has a little bit of clippage left and then you're going to want to tighten these stop nuts now again, as I've said before, you want to make sure you tell your alignment technician that you have these. An alignment tech might just do like a toe setting and then say that your camber can't be aligned. I've had that happen before where people did not tell their alignment technician that these were on there. All right, we're back. I don't know what happened. I'm filming with GoPros and they're not very reliable. I'm just gonna say that. This is your rear upper control arm and you have to make sure that this little tab right here is facing down so that the ABS lines will clip back in properly. Uh, the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna want to tighten up these stop nuts so that it doesn't come loose so that you can make the journey to your alignment shop after you get these installed. All right, I wanna go over something that is specific to the element and that's the rear tire is very, very tight against this part of the inner fender right here. This sticks out pretty far. And even from the factory, you can barely put a fingertip between this and the tire. And when you go with a wider tire, especially if you're on factory wheels, it is going to rub right there. So what you want to do is install, at the very least, a set of wheel spacers. These are called hub-centric wheel spacers. Um, by the time this video is out, hopefully HRG Off-Road will have these for sale on the website. So check that out, hrgoffroad.com. And this gives it just enough room so that the tire does not come in contact with this when the suspension is at full extension like this. If you put wider tires on an element, especially with the lift kit, you have to put wheel spacers on or go with a low offset wheel. I recommend a 15 by eight zero offset or a 16 by eight zero offset wheel. So that is the tire and wheel recommendation that I would use on the element. So that's pretty much it for the installation. Now I wanna point out one thing right now, that the car is sitting really high and I don't want you to freak out. You just got done doing an install and it's sitting really high like this. One thing you've got to remember is that the suspension has to settle just a little bit. It's not gonna sit like this permanently. But yeah, basically I'm gonna steer the wheels and I want you to see how much it drops when I do that. All right, did you see it drop? It dropped at least an inch or so. And once we drive it around, it'll drop even more. But also there's one other caveat to this. Results may vary because of the fact that there are so many different kinds of aftermarket suspension out there. We've seen lift heights differ a full inch from brand A to brand B. We, we talked about this on one of our earlier videos on the first gen CRV. So keep that in mind. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching to the end. And if you are looking for a lift kit for your Element or CRV or Ridgeline or Pilot, we do have them at hrgoffroad.com. Go check it out. We have a lot of awesome stuff. There's going to be a lot more stuff coming for Element too. So keep your eyes on the website for that. And if that said, I appreciate you guys watching all the way to the end. And I'll see you in the next video.